it doesn't. And, and this part's the optic chiasm. And that's the optic chiasm. Right. And it's carrying the fibers from the nasal portion of the retina or the temporal portions of the visual field. Both the same thing. Mm -hmm. Nasal retina, temporal visual field crossing at the optic chiasm. Okay. So up here, we've got a whole fish. Mm -hmm. And then coming down here, we've got a fish nose. And then up here, we've got a whole fish. And then down here, we've got a fish tail again. Exactly right. So that's, that's the big split in them. And then in here, it's the bit that is damaged if you've got bitemporal hemianopia. Yeah, mm -hmm. which I actually rem remember what that is. Yeah. So what have we got? If we go back up to there, we've lost a temporal field. Mm -hmm. And then we go back up to there, and we've lost another temporal field. Temporal field. visual field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we've lost the tip of the shark's nose and the tip of the shark's tail, but we've probably still got his dorsal fin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> OK. Good. Good. So we've now established that everything in the left visual field ends up tracking to the right visual cortex and everything in the right visual field to the left visual cortex. Uh, the next step in the pathway post chiasm is the optic tract and obviously um, the optic tract on the right is carrying all of the visual information from the left visual field regardless of which eye it came from. Everything on the left optic tract is carrying information from the right visual field regardless of which um, pathway, that, w which eye they came from. The next stop is a synaptic uh, ending. This is the first synapse since coming out of the retina. The first synapse in the, is in the lateral geniculate body where the fibrous synapse and then the next order neuron finds its way back to the uh, primary visual cortex and the occipital cortex either side of the calcarine sulcus. And Paul, that, this geniculate body is in the thalamus, isn't it? Yes, it is. A, it so is it's, a, it, it's obeying this little rule I have mm -hmm. that all conscious sensation has to synapse in the thalamus. With one exception, that's true. The What's exception the exception? Is olfactory. Olfactory. It's the only one that okay, So that lateral, lateral geniculate mm -hmm. body is in the thalamus. Yes. Yes, and highly um, retinotopically organized. We don't really need to go into it, but it is highly organized, as of course is the calcarine, uh, the primary visual cortex, either side of the calcarine sulcus as Was well. Was that the part of the lecture where you had a kind of checkerboard that you could see on each one? It is, yes, and I happen to have that same image with me, which I hope will be helpful. Um, in this image, here is the visual field as presented to um, the person. Of course, we know that things are turned left and right and upside down by the lens, and so is, there is the representation of the visual field on the two eyes. So there's the visual field, there is its representation on the two retinae, and of course, since it's the left visual field, it tracks all the way into the right uh, uh, optic tract, so 100% of it ends up on the right-hand side. There is a representation of the um, lateral geniculate nucleus, and from there, there is the representation of those next-order neurons projecting to um, the primary visual cortex, either side of the calcarine sulcus, in the midline of the occipital lobe. Okay. So, can we demonstrate that in shark form, do you think? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Then we should sit um, to colour. <laughs> a little bit difficult. I think we can do it. So not only is the information from the left visual cortex entirely going, sort of, the left visual field going entirely to the right visual cortex, but the representation on the cortex is very retinotopic, so that all of the information from the upper visual field on the left side goes to the cortex just below the calcarine sulcus on the right visual cortex. All of the visual information coming from the lower visual field ends up on the right, in this case in the left visual cortex, visual field, ends up on the right visual uh, cortex just above the calcarine sulcus. And in addition, uh, the portion around the highest uh, acuity, that is the, the, the foveal area of the retina, um, ends up at the very back of the, the posterior pole of the occipital cortex and occupies a much larger area of cortex uh, than the actual visual, um, the portion of the visual field perceived. And so as much as like, sorry, sorry. And, yeah, you go ahead. as much like the um, homunculus then, Very with how much space you um, give to... Exactly right. Chair. This so is a very high acuity and therefore a large portion of cortex yeah. is, is dedicated to it. So it's just because that's got much higher density of rods and cones? Essentially, so. yes. Well, a much higher density of cones. Cones. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Well, we've already had a, a little bit of a talk about some of the optic um, problems that you can have with lesions in the optic nerve and deeper into the brain. So are, are there any that we've missed? We've talked about the um, bitemporal hemianopia. Mm -hmm. So what haven't we covered? Well, I think the, the, the three main places that you're going to potentially have lesions uh, and therefore that you have to have an understanding of what that lesion would disrupt are shown in this diagram, which of course there are the eyes, the visual fields, uh, there's the optic nerves, the optic chiasm, tract, geniculate, and finally projections, optic radiations projecting back to the primary visual cortex. So certainly one lesion would be a lesion of the optic nerve itself. Mm -hmm. And of course a lesion of the optic nerve itself is simply going to completely eliminate all visual information from that one eye. And so that is simply going to be monocular blindness in that case of a lesion in, in a region like this. Mm -hmm. Just to underline then, mm -hmm. You've harm, you, your right eye is out, but it doesn't mean you can't see to the right. You can just see less to the right, but with your left oh, eye. Oh, exactly. Yeah. It, it, where there's binocular vision, you will still be perceiving the right visual yeah. field. Mm -hmm. you, of course, the binocular vision is limited in, in, yeah. in its extent. A lesion to the optic chiasm, which is not unusual because of the fact that the, pitu the, 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 the pituitary sits just below it, and you can have tumors of that. Um, but a lesion here, of course, is going to catch fibers which are coming from the the uh, nasal portion of the retina, i.e. the temporal portion of the visual fields, and therefore you are going to eliminate vision from the two lateral uh, temporal visual fields. And okay, that, so, mm -hmm. sorry, um, so if you're eliminating nasal retina, okay, mm -hmm. nasal retina uh, vision, right. the reason why pituitary tumors often cause a problem like bitemporal hemianopia it's because it affects more centrally. Exactly. The pituitary centrally. happens to sit just below this, and therefore tumors, for example, of the pituitary can project upwards and actually yeah. impinge, apparently, okay. upon this region specifically, so the sparing the straight fibers. Okay, so the tracts which cross are the ones which are affected, mm -hmm. which in this case is the nasal region. Exactly. Nasal, nasal retina, retina yeah. temporal visual field. Okay. Right. And that, of course... Sorry. I was mm -hmm. just going to say... You, you could potentially have a pituitary tumour that could obliterate everything, though, if it oh, was I'm big sure enough. Oh, I'm sure that's true. So I'm sure that's true. But um, they do, uh, as do other things, yes. for example, some types of, of uh, aneurysms. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking of something which happened to, to knock out the fibres along okay. the midline. It, it, so it's not simply a, 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 an, an exercise. It can actually happen. And that is going to eliminate the, the lateral portions, that is to say the temporal visual fields on both sides, it's going to eliminate half of the visual field, essentially, and that's a hemianopia, anopia meaning loss of, uh, of vision, um, and so that would be a bitemporal hemianopia. You would lose vision laterally on both eyes. Mm -hmm. Fun Tunnel vision, right? In, in a way, yes, yeah. you, would, uh, you would perceive the central yeah. portions of both, path, uh, of both eyes. Finally, a lesion either in the optic tract or back here in the optic radiations, they would be uh, essentially, um, uh, they would be similar, uh, is going to knock out the vision from both eyes but from the opposite visual field. So a, a lesion here in the right optic uh, radiation, for example, or indeed the right optic tract, either one, is going to eliminate vision on the left visual field in both eyes. And that's going to give you an appearance like that. And that's a homonymous hemianopia. In this case, it would be a left homonymous, meaning same uh, uh, visual, si same side of the visual field. Uh, hemianopia meaning half field lost, uh, and so that would be a left homonymous hemianopia. Thanks for watching our second podcast, and thank you to Dr. Feltz and Prof. Parkin. Um, we're hoping to have some clinicians in next week. Um, so tune in then and leave feedback on PRN please. Bye bye. Thank you.